right now. A robotic lander about the size of a golf cart. Firefly Blue Ghost, separation confirmed. Is heading for the moon. It's called the Blue Ghost. It's one of several landers that were chosen for NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services, or CLPS, program. It's a way to get science and technology demonstrations to the moon for a lower cost. Blue Ghost has been capturing stunning imagery of our planet throughout its journey. Just after midnight on February 9th, the lander performed a maneuver called the Translunar Injection Burn, or TLI. The 21-second engine firing began its four-day trip towards lunar orbit. And on February 13th, the four-minute lunar insertion burn, marking the arrival of Blue Ghost in orbit around the moon. The energy in the team right now is just a whole other level. And so just feeding off of that excitement, it's super exciting to see. And I grew up with stories of Apollo and everything. And so to see that come full circle just personally is awesome. The company behind Blue Ghost is Firefly Aerospace. Most folks may know about the company for the launches of its small lift rockets called Alpha, or they heard about the development of their medium lift rocket called the Medium Launch Vehicle. By the way, Firefly and its partner in this venture, Northrop Grumman, say there will be a real name for that rocket and MLV is just a placeholder for now, but back to Blue Ghost. 10, 9, 8. Blue Ghost seven, began its moonbound adventure by hitching five, a ride on board a SpaceX four, Falcon 9 three, rocket. Two. One, ignition, and lift off, go Firefly, go ice space, go Falcon. It roared off the pad at historic launch complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center at 1.11 a.m. Eastern Time on January 15th. Side note, this was SpaceX's 100th orbital launch from pad 39A. Tucked inside the Falcon 9's payload fairings, fairing separation confirmed, was a lunar lander called Blue Ghost. Its name comes from a species of firefly found in the eastern and central United States. There was also another robotic lander on board this flight. Underneath this specifically designed canister is the Resilience Lander from Japan-based company iSpace. We'll talk more about their mission in a separate video. Before the launch, we spoke with Firefly's Vice President of Engineering, Bridget Oakes. She says several pieces of the lander have heritage with the Alpha rocket, which has flown five missions so far. Oak says much of the design from their original concept three years ago remained unchanged through to the final product. We really also took a lot of lessons learned from previous missions. I mean, we did a full thorough review of every lunar mission uh, that went up, whether it was commercial or NASA, and took a lot of lessons learned from that. And then essentially kind of just fine tuned and adapted for Firefly's model with the additional product lines and then took the best of what previous companies have done before us. Firefly named its first mission to the moon, Ghost Riders in the Sky, as a hat tip to the Johnny Cash song of the same name. It also gave its mission milestones a road trip flare, with celestial milestone markers dotted along the way. The successful translunar injection burn was followed a day later by the roughly two second long burn called a trajectory correction maneuver. This helped ensure that Blue Ghost remained on the correct course to the moon. In fact, it was so successful that Firefly decided to wave off a second TCM. Three days after that, Blue Ghost completed a 4 minute and 15 second long lunar orbit insertion burn. That put the spacecraft in an elliptical orbit around the moon. The lander has three more milestones before touching down on the surface of the moon, vision navigation calibration, low lunar orbit insertion, and the descent to orbit insertion. Oaks picks up the mission from there. The Blue Ghost lander will be at an altitude of 100 kilometers, which will start our descent orbit insertion. From there, we're going to coast for approximately 51 minutes with all of our engines off. This will be a coast phase for us where we're going to use vision-based terrain relative navigation so we can measure the vehicle's position. At approximately 12 minutes before touchdown, we're gonna start our power descent initiation. So all of our engines, that main engine and your RCS engines are going to reduce your orbital velocity from 1.7 kilometers per second down to 40 meters per second, making sure that we're positioning ourselves above that target landing site. T minus 100 seconds before touchdown, our main engine is going to shut down and we're going to keep those RCS thrusters on and pulsing as needed to control that descent rate. We're going to get down to about a meter per second. The vision navigation system we have on board is going to continue to track the craters, slopes, and anything that might be off nominal to make sure that we're picking a hazard-free target. And then T minus 11 seconds, we were going to continue at that one meter per second speed until we reach that lunar surface and ultimately touching down on the moon. 
Blue Ghost is targeting a soft landing on March 2nd. Teams at Firefly's Mission Control Center in Texas will know in mere seconds if touchdown was successful. So we'll be able to get almost immediate feedback from the touchpad sensors on the, the feet for the lander, and then we'll actually be able to get an SD resolution photo within about a half hour after landing and then get some HD photos maybe another half hour after that. Firefly's CEO Jason Kim says he's confident that the team will have a successful landing on the moon. He credits the number of rehearsals done in preparation for the mission as well as the lander's design. There's uh, a reason why people think it looks like other landers that have landed successfully. Those landing pads are designed carefully with crumple zones and so if you think of honeycomb aluminum and how crunchy it is, it's got that built into the actual structure. And so when it lands, it's gonna, uh, kind of like your car when you get in an accident and it crumples um, deliberately, that's what that design uh, entails. And so that's gonna help with cushioning the landing uh, because at the end of the day, that's what we wanna demonstrate is a soft landing. Once on the moon's surface, Blue Ghost is designed to operate for a full lunar day. That's about 14 Earth days. On March 14th, Blue Ghost will attempt to capture a total solar eclipse when Earth blocks the sun for a brief time. Finally, on March 16th, it will take images of the lunar sunset and is also designed to operate for several hours into the lunar night. Oak says that working correctly in the dark will be challenging, but the Alpha Heritage hardware provided them good data to help prove out their designs. The environments in space are tough, and so the radiation environments and making sure that we can survive lunar nights, so the avionics is absolutely critical, and that's part of this leverage of having already flown that hardware on the Alpha vehicle sets us up well to, to already test some of the areas that we're concerned about. The propulsion system is unique, so we haven't been able, that's a hypergol engine, a thruster, that we have on there uh, that are our landing thrusters and they are not flight proven yet. So those aren't on our Alpha vehicle. And we have done a lot of testing over the last two years to um, make sure that we're well suited for this mission. I mean, that team has just been phenomenal to turn that design around in the span of probably about uh, nine months from concept to first hot fire through all the development and then qualification. So everything on this lander is qualified. And so having gone through Forex life cycles and starts and everything else to really prove it out, even if it hasn't already gone to space, that, that gives us our, the confidence. It's not just the lander that will be put through its paces on this mission, but also 10 science payloads from NASA and other research institutes. They're designed to study a range of features on the moon, from how lunar dust or regolith adheres to surfaces, to the internal heat flow of the moon, to the plume of dust kicked up during the landing sequence. We have a group of NASA that gets together to define what is the NASA cargo we will compete with industry to take to the moon. And we competed um, all these individual instruments, these 10 instruments that we ended up manifesting on this Firefly own mission. And we saw that for the type of advanced scientific or engineering measurements we wanted to make, the instruments were small enough and compact enough that we could actually fly 10 if someone could actually schedule them to get all their operations done over the a 14 Earth Day long lunar daytime. We have a phenomenal assembly integration team and mission manager team. And so they, our customers have uh, points of contact with our team to go and check out. We review their procedures, they review our procedures. If we have questions about uh, onboard operations with one payload, um, potentially overlapping with another payload, we're working those live with all of the teams and getting everybody's feedback together. And then the assembly integration team is, I mean, they're doing all of the checkouts, they're writing all of the software tests, they're actually doing all of the mechanical integrations. There isn't a siloed portion of the job that they're trained to do. They touch everything on that lander from welding to electrical checkouts. And so you have that really strong technical discipline of folks on the team in the clean room going and running and helping do this integration and testing combined with the partnership with the customers to pull it all together, I think has made that work really well. Dennis Harris on the left and Mike Selby on the right are from Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. They serve as mission managers for seven of the 10 payloads on board the Blue Ghost Lander. Harris says among the five he oversees, there are a couple that he's particularly interested in. Let's just call it first among equals or first and second. I think the two that are, I'm really interested in, uh, Lexi, um, with the views of the solar wind against our magnetosphere, 
and NGLR with the promise of deeper understanding of even cosmology and the uh, workings of the lunar surface and interior. Blue Ghost also carries with it the Lunar Planet Vac, or LPV instrument. Designed by Honeybee Robotics, a subsidiary of Blue Origin, the LPV will collect samples of lunar regolith using compressed gas. It's designed as a test case for future sample collection. Another technology demonstration is the Lunar GNSS Receiver Experiment, or Luger instrument. Led by NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland, in partnership with the Italian Space Agency, it will demonstrate the capabilities of global navigation satellite system operations on the moon. As James Miller describes it, it's essentially extending GPS to the moon. NASA has been flying GPS in space for quite some time, but never this far. And so at this point in time, we have a mission, MMS, that's a heliospheric mission. It's halfway uh, to the moon, and we're processing signals uh, that show us navigation grade uh, precision. And so why not build a receiver that's more sensitive, a higher gain antenna, and really close the gap and be able to contribute to the Artemis program by having all of our space missions be equipped with GPS. Miller says proving the viability of GPS in cislunar space will be an important asset for lunar exploration until a more moon-specific solution is established. The journey of the Blue Ghost lunar lander is an important step for Firefly Aerospace. It's already preparing for other missions as part of NASA's CLIPS program. But for now, the team is focused on the mission at hand and also imagining what it'll be like to finally receive confirmation of touchdown. Uh, cheering, chaos. Um, no, I mean, it'll be absolutely unreal. You're gonna have everybody in the control room, whether you are um, a Firefly employee or not, and everybody, I think, just cheering along with us for that moment. That moment is expected on March 2nd. Reporting for Spaceflight Now, I'm Will Robinson-Smith.